All right, welcome back. Uh, hopefully the proofs have not killed you. You're still alive and well and doing all right. Um, we're gonna keep going on with proofs and we're going to talk about proofs with CP, CTC. Now, take a deep breath. It's not that bad. I know it looks intimidating. It looks like, a, uh, what is a CP, CTC thing, okay? It's, it's okay, trust me. Um, all it is is one more step onto our proofs. So you know, the first day we did four step proofs and then yesterday we did five step proofs. Now today we're gonna do some six step proofs, okay? But it, the, the last step is, is really easy, okay? It looks complicated, but, but let me just let you know, this is not too bad. All right, so what does CPC stand for? What in the world could that mean? Well, what it means is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. You're probably still asking, what in the world does that mean? Well, let me show you. We know that these two triangles are congruent, right? A, B, C, and D, E, F. We know they're congruent by side, side, side. Okay, I've got side, 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 and that matches my side, side, side. Um, now, notice, let's look at angle C and angle F. Before I knew they were congruent, did I know anything about angle C or angle F? I didn't, right? They look the same size. I guess they could be the same size, but I don't know for sure. What corresponding parts of congruent triangles means, uh, are congruent, what it means is that all the pieces that match, okay, remember corresponding angles are like matching angles, so the matching parts of triangles that we know to be congruent, those parts are also going to be congruent. So since I know that ABC is congruent to DEF, or I guess I should say ABC is congruent to, um, what, EDF technically to be, be right here, right, um, is that the matching pieces, so this C matches up with angle F, then I know those two angles are going to be congruent as well. I know it because I know the triangles are congruent, and then that means all the other matching parts also have to be congruent. So what we're going to do in our proofs today, we're gonna to prove the triangle's congruent, like we normally do, and then we're gonna do one last step. Usually the proof is no longer going to ask us to prove the triangle's congruent, but they'll try to ask, like in this case, they might ask, prove that angle C is congruent to angle F. So my proof would look like this, you know, AB is congruent to ED. Um, and I would list the sides, given, given, given. Triangles are congruent by SSS. And then I know angle C matches angle F. So I know angle C is congruent to angle F. Why do I know that? By CPCTC. So just one more step. Um, this really is just more practice on doing proofs. Now, in past years, I know my students have struggled with parallel lines. We're gonna look at two proofs. They're both gonna have parallel lines in them because I think we just need to get some reps because there's a lot of mistakes that we can make with parallel lines. So we're just gonna get some practice in with the parallel lines and the proofs, and then we're going to look at using CPCTC here. So first off, let's take a look. What am I trying to prove? Now in the past, there's always triangles. In this case, it's not a triangle. This is going at the end of my statement and I'm going to use CPCTC. So I actually, if I wanted to, I could actually fill in the bottom row of my proof. I know BC is congruent to DC. How do I know that CPCTC? That's gonna be the last line. Everything else is gonna be my regular congruent triangle proof. All right, so let's take a look. Let's list our stuff out here. AC is congruent to EC and that's given. I also know that AB um, is parallel to ED. That's also given. All right, so now comes the fun work. Let's start, um, let's start with AB parallel to ED. So I know this line is parallel to that line. Now there's actually two different ways that we could do this proof, but let's see, can we find, um, well, let's, let's review. A, B, D, E, are they congruent? I don't know, I can't know. I know they're parallel, I don't know they're congruent. So that is not a side that we can count. When we're counting up our triangles, we do have this side right here. I cannot count those parallel lines as a side unless they tell me they're congruent or I have some other reason to believe that they're congruent. But parallel alone is not enough to prove congruency. All right, what angle pair is congruent because these lines are parallel? There's actually two right answers here. 
you could say angle A and angle E. And again, if we want to sketch out kind of what that would look like, and those are my parallel lines, angle A and E look like this. Okay, so you see those right there, those would be alternate interior. Or I could say B and D, because if I kind of drop out this line right here, I would it would look something like that. They're also alternate interior. Now you could pick both of them if you wanted to. You could choose one of them. We also have some vertical angles in here. So as long as you get two of the three angles, any way you wanna do it, that's gonna be fine. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, I'll say angle A is congruent to angle E, and that's by AIA, alternate interior angles. Okay. Now you can only use AIA after we've talked about there already being parallel lines. The order does matter. That's why we put our given stuff first because if I started off here with alternate interior angles, that wouldn't prove anything until I've already said parallel lines. So I know A and E are congruent by parallel lines. Okay, so those are congruent. And for fun, let's uh, let's not use the vertical angle. Let's, let's use this, um, no, I don't want that pen. Uh, let's use this other alternate interior angle pair, the this blue pair, just for fun. So I could say angle B is congruent to angle D, also by alternate interior angles. Now, how do I know these two triangles are congruent? Well, I know they're congruent by angle, angle, side. Now, let's make sure we label our triangles correct. Excuse me, oof. Let's try and label our triangles correctly. So I'm just gonna say ABC, okay? You can put the first triangle in any order you want, just so long you match it up with the second triangle. I know A matches with E, I know B matches with D, and I know C matches with C. So now we don't have the proof statement to help us with this piece, so we do need to make sure we do it correct on our own. And then now that I know the triangles are congruent, now I can say that BC is congruent to DC. So I know um, BC, is congruent to DC, and that is by CPCTC. All right, and there we go. We did our first CPCTC proof. So that wasn't that bad. Now, some of you might have noticed, well, what if instead of using this B angle, we actually use the C angle instead? What if we did those instead? Then I'd end up with angle side angle, and then my proof would be wrong. Well. You're mostly right, you're right. We could use the vertical angle and we could end up with angle side angle and that would be perfectly fine. Some triangles actually have multiple ways that you can prove them congruent. I chose to do angle angle side, but if you chose angle side angle here with a vertical angle, that's totally fine. You could do that instead. Now the, the questions I have on your, on your work for today, I don't think you can solve multiple ways. I try to keep it just one way to solve them just to keep it uh, simpler so you didn't get confused. All right, last one here. Once again, let's list out our statements. I know AB is congruent. Oof, that was a rough congruency sign. AB is congruent to DC, and that's given. I know BC is congruent to CE, And that's also given. And I know AB is parallel to DC. That's also given. All right, and they've done a nice job of just listing this out for us. We've got the two congruent signs and the, the arrows meaning parallel. All right, so my next step is I want to prove AC is congruent to DE. So that means I need to, uh, that's not my next step, that's my goal. That means I need to prove the triangle's congruent. If I wanna prove the triangle's congruent, it looks like I'm gonna need another side or angle. Now, I don't know anything about these sides, right? So that's not helpful. So I need an angle. Those parallel lines should help us find an angle. Now, once again, if it's easier, let me rewrite, kind of re, re sketch this out. This is B and E. And I've got this line here, and this line here, and that's a D. And these are the parallel lines. What angle pair, so this is my transversal because it's cutting, it's the only line that cuts really through both, I guess you could look at A and C, um, A, C, D there, but that's not gonna be really helpful. Notice this angle pair right here. What angle pair is that when we're dealing with parallel lines? 
hopefully you recognize those to be a corresponding angle pair. So this is a new one that we haven't talked about a lot. Um, actually, I'm just going to type it out because it's much neater than my handwriting. All right, corresponding. And I'm going to cheat here. Let's, um, let's shrink this so it fits. All right, so this is a corresponding angle pair. So I can say angle B is congruent to angle. Now I can't say C because I've got a whole bunch of different angles here that could be C. I'm gonna say angle D, C, E. It's a corresponding angle pair. All right, so the, that means these guys are congruent. Now how do I know these triangles are congruent? Well, I, let's list our triangles out first. A, B, C, this is pretty easy to match up. Is congruent to triangle DCE. Now let's look what I have. I've got a side, I've got an angle, I've got a side. How do I tell if this is angle side side or side angle side? I can tell because the sides, side angle side here, um, notice the angle is trapped, it's included, it's in between my two sides, so this is going to be side angle side rather than angle side side. All right, now that I've proven the triangle is congruent, I can finish by saying AC is congruent to DE. And that's by CPCTC. So you see that this is not particularly difficult. We're just adding this bottom line. Before we would have stopped here at the triangles ABC and DCE, but now we're gonna add one more line and just say CPCTC at the end. Uh, the hardest part here is recognizing those corresponding angles. So I did want to go through one example like this because sometimes it pops up here or there. So just that you've seen it, refresh corresponding angles. Uh, your work today, I know it's been a lot of Google Forms, but it's just the best way I know how for you to practice this in a kind of a manageable way. These are going to be the hardest proofs you've seen yet. Now, I don't think they're much harder than yesterday's, but there's going to be more blanks. So there's more places for you to make the decisions. All right, um, as always, if you have any questions, shoot me an email um, and then I will hopefully get to see you here coming up soon.